So today's video is going to be about an interesting topic, and it's one that comes up quite often on my channel, especially whenever there's a disagreement between spouses on what they should be looking for in an RV. Oftentimes, when you go to a dealership, the dealership's going to try to set up an RV and configure it in a way that you look at all the things that they want you to see, but not necessarily some of the things that you should probably see. So this video is going to talk about that. When you go to an RV dealership and you're looking at the various floor plans that are available, what should you be looking at and what should you essentially try to avoid being drawn into? So hang tight, I'll be right back. Well, I planned on going to an RV dealership to do this video, but I've been stuck in traffic for the last hour, no joke, and it's a little bit difficult to get out there. So I figured I'd start the video with this topic and talk about it a little bit and then maybe continue it once I get to the dealership. So when you go into an RV, some of the easiest things to fixate on are the things that are right in front of your face, of course. The appliances, the sconces, the looks of the wood tone, the couch, the interior in general that just stands out from a cosmetic perspective because it's right there in front of you. Those are things that you are going to see, you're going to touch every time you go in the RV, and you want it to look nice. But what I don't want you to do is focus so much on that and get excited about that part of it that you miss some of the equally important aspects of the build itself as well as the ergonomics of it. So for instance, you may be fascinated by something in the kitchen. Let's say it has a really upgraded cooktop or it has really nice light fixtures or just the way that they designed some aspect of it really stands out. And that's great because we all want to get into an RV that looks good as well as functions well. But then it's time to take a step back. So you found all the things that you love about it, but very rarely do people actually say, let's find a list of things that just won't work well for us. Let's find a list of things that we would have to change within the first six months of spending time in this or the first six camping trips we go on. What are some areas that aren't ideal for us. And what you may find is if you can think of those areas before you buy, they can shape your decision on which floor plan you go with because you'll all of a sudden realize that there's expense and cost in changing some of those things later. Let me give you an example from the exterior. So you may look around the exterior of an RV and say, wow, this looks absolutely fantastic. I love the pass-through storage. I love access to my water connections, all of that. It may all look absolutely great. But then you have to pause, step back, and say, well, let me find things that might be an issue for me. Because if those are things I have to address after owning it, of course, those are things I have to budget for. So take a look at your tires. Take a look at your suspension. Take a look at the exterior lighting. Take a look at where things are placed on the outside of the RV and how convenient it might be based on different places you may go, based on how traditional RV parks may be set up, and understanding the reasoning behind some of it's important, but more so how it would apply to you and a trip you may go on with your family. So back into the interior. Let's say you're looking at the kitchen and the kitchen looks fantastic. One thing you should always do is take a mental note of how many cabinets and drawers there are, and then where you would place things like dishes, cups, and utensils. Finding a place for some of those in RVs that only have cabinets can be a little bit difficult. You might end up having to put them in plastic bins as opposed to having an actual utensil drawer. Finding places for things that you plan on bringing with you is very important. For instance, let's say you're looking at a fifth wheel that has adequate storage, but you know you're gonna bring your kids with you and their power wheels and their bicycles and things like that, where would you put those? How would you bring those with you? How would you address those storage concerns? So it's always a good idea to, of course, appreciate what they've done on the interior of these RVs, but it's an even better idea to critique it. Critique it in your own mind. Think of the things that you plan on bringing with you for fun think of the things that are necessities. Where can you put those? Where are you going to put your clothes? How are you going to put your clothes in there? If you are into motorcycling, where are you going to put your helmet? Where are you going to put your bike? You have to consider all the other aspects of camping. And the whole point of all this is to understand what it takes to not regret the purchasing decision you made. The worst possible way to turn a great opportunity like getting an RV into a horrible investment 
is to get an RV that's the wrong floor plan and then lose a ton of money trading it in or trying to sell it to get the right floor plan. An investment in an RV can easily be towards memories, fun, and all the stuff that you want to invest into in terms of personal health and personal well-being. But if you do it in a way that makes you have to get out of that investment to get into another one too soon, well then of course you've lost a lot of money and that's not the goal here. So whenever you're walking around, all I'm trying to do is tell you to look at things in a positive light, but be very willing to critique things. Be very willing to look at the spaces as functional or not functional, as will they work for us or will they not work for us, as how much money will we have to invest into this to fix it up to a condition that will allow us to use it for whatever application we're trying to use it for. It's really important to understand that, and I think a lot of people fall short of that. They get into an RV, they don't even sit down in the chairs, they don't even sit down on the sofa to see if they have to crane their neck to look at the TV. They don't even lay down in the bed to see if they fit on the bed. They don't get in the shower to see if they fit in the shower. They don't look under the bathroom sink to see if they can fit their cleaning supplies. Or they don't even open the refrigerator to see if there's enough room. Maybe they only look for a single AC, but they live down in the southern part of the US and they don't think about the heat. So everything else looks really great, but then they only have one AC unit, so they really can't enjoy it because they're miserable because it's hot or you go up north and you struggle with your furnace. There are so many things you have to think about. So what I encourage you to do is shop for an RV and look at all of that. And of course, look at the numbers of what your truck's capable of towing as well. You wanna factor in your tow vehicle. It's great to look at an RV, but you can be very easily persuaded to upgrade to a larger RV than you're comfortable towing simply because you believe a couple thousand pounds extra isn't gonna impact you that much whenever you're towing. And these are all important things to factor in whenever you're shopping for an RV, especially while you're considering what you're gonna pay for it. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm stuck in traffic. I wish I would have made it to the RV dealership to walk around some of them and show you. I may do another video on that topic, but at least this message I think is getting out there and it's important for you all to understand. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you again very soon.